try that again. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> I already messed up the intro, damn it. <laughs> Welcome back to another Getting Projects Done with me, Chris. Today I am working on my Aeronautica Imperialis and uh, getting some more plane, some more pew pew down. Because uh, why not? Now I have, um, I'm not using my airbrush for anything at this moment. I don't think I am. I'm mostly happy with the red, how everything's turned out. On camera, they look pretty close to how I want. In person, um, they do have a bit more of a an orange quality to them. So I might use the airbrush later on and uh resaturate it with like a clear red or something it all depends it all depends on how uh, how i'm feeling i'm joined today by barfing sheep and what are you working on barfing uh, maggot king of nurgle with an n maggot king king kin of nurgle nice very cool sophie thought you were streaming on both your twitch and uh and or your and YouTube and Twitch for a moment. Yeah. No, I messed up. I messed up. I'm going to have to go in and delete that from the uh, YouTubes because it was probably recorded, what, like a second or two of going live on YouTubes? Don't mean to do that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's just 20 seconds of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured as much. Uh... So I'm going to get things started with some Contrast Black Templar. And let's... We're going to do the intakes, the weapons, and the anti-grav doodads underneath. As you may or may not notice, I've also pulled the uh, tape from the stands. Now, I actually was thinking maybe I'll demonstrate something here. Because I had used uh, regular painter's tape just simply to mask off the stems, but there is a little bit of that glue on here because it's been sitting there for days and days. But also where the ball meets up with the, the rest of the plane, it's kind of painted over because I didn't get the bottom portion of the ball. And I'm toying with the idea of taking the stem off and cleaning that. So if you really want me to do that, I'll, I'll show it. If not, we'll carry on. I mean, it doesn't really make a big deal, does it? Does it? Don't neglect the bottom of the ball. <laughs> Don't forget your undercarriage. Yep. Sophie, way of the brush blooper reel. Yeah. Shit, is this way? The, no, I got this all titled properly. Oh, man. People messing with me. You're messing with me, people. All right. I've already given it a shake on my mixer and so really quickly here i'm just going to start laying color in. that's it it's going to be pretty boring just me laying contrast down i could lay this in a fairly um you know controlled fashion where i could allow some of the brighter color to create the highlights and such i mean it's already contrast but it's going to show through kind of red and i'm probably just going to use like i'm just going to use the contrast really just to block in color uh, I find that uh, contrast paint works really, really well in that regard. So for just like blocking things in and, you know, just kind of um, being really effective at, you know, just falling into recesses and giving me a quick look. Actually, I don't really mind that. Contrast paint is a pathway to many abilities. Some consider to be unnatural. It is possible to learn this art. <laughs> Let's break it. There we go. Hey, that's a good Palpatine. Many years of practice. Oh, yeah? Is that how you convince your friends and stuff to do things? Do it. I hear you. Yeah. See, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it gets it gets you a, a look. Um, I don't know if I 
it shows up very well on camera. Yeah, you can still see some of the red poking through. I'll probably give it another uh, layering just to really kind of block it in. But yeah. Oh, the guns. Forgot the guns. Forgot the, the gune. Do, 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 do. So did you have a good weekend? Bunchin. It was a new chair kind of weekend? Yeah, it was one of those new chair weekends. Nice. What? No, it's fucking... It's Wednesday today. I got the chair yesterday. Woo! Yeah. So it was my chair weekend. So you lied to me then. Fucking, yeah. you fucking misrepresented yourself there, bud. <laughs> um, I think I'll do the canopies the way I do them on my big planes, with gold inside the inside the windows. Mind you, though, on my big planes, the frame around each of the canopies. Is black and I don't think I want to do that I think I just want to do just gold inside you know we'll lay we'll lay black down on the uh, the engine nozzles as well just because we're more than likely gonna hit it with some metallics Do, 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 do. I think the vents are, or I should say the intakes are dry, so we're going to come in and put another layer down and block in that stuff really nice, just like so. Yeah, I had a pretty uh, uneventful weekend. hard to get motivated right now just with everything that's been going on it's hard Kim hey guys a bit late but I'm here now welcome Kim now everybody well you're everybody's in the twitch but everybody that's in the twitch can you guys see the demon monkey bot response in the chat? I don't know. I can see it. You can see the demon monkey bot uh, response? Yes. Oh, okay. I was just curious to see how long, um, like, when you're offline, how long a chat or something like that stays up there. You know what? Honestly, I'm liking just doing one layer. I did it on the intake, and I actually, when I was looking at it really close, I kind of liked how it was mostly dark red on the grill of the intakes. Contrast is a really, really fun way of just kind of half-assing your way to success. Now, normally on my planes, I do the guns in black but I'm thinking I am thinking I might do them white or light gray just so they stand out normally I don't do that on my Samhan stuff everything's black you know what I'm gonna go grab my my Phoenix bomber that's like this because that's I'm gonna show you guys what my goal is here hold on uh, sheep entertain everyone regale them with a tail I 
regaled him with a tail? No. Oh, fucking guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I told him that I could tell it, but I'll have to kill everyone afterwards. <laughs> It's nice to know I can rely on you. <laughs> Good old dependable sheep. Anyway, I'm just teasing. Um, you know, I'm gonna use my. I use this uh, this GW scenery brush, this big honking brush. I use this for uh, dusting my minis, and I do get quite a bit of dust in my area. Oh wait, shit. Da, 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 da. I'm just gonna. I'm just dusting it so it looks nice on camera. That's all. Do, 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 do. I'm sure many of you probably have never seen my Forge World Flyer collection. I don't know if I've. I mean, mainly because it's a lot of it is like kind of half done, so it's probably why I've never really done like a a full group shot or anything. But anyway. So here is Moth Phoenix. And these are, of course, they are legit uh, Forge World models. And yeah, so, oh wait, I should have got my other one. Because my other one has the, the chevrons, I have them running this way on the wing. This one, but maybe I'll do, maybe I'll imitate each of the, of the flyers. But anyway, um, base coated entirely in... Uh, it used, what was the old, what was the old mid-tone red? Um, it wasn't Evil Sun Scarlet, it was... Wazdaka? Was it Wazdaka? It was the old name for the, like, for the mid-tone red. Anyway, uh, all these highlights on this, they're all dry brushed. This was, I did this model, actually no, I had to airbrush at the time I, I did, uh, I was painting these models, but I dry brushed this. So all the highlights you see are just simple dry brushes. And then picked out all the gems. Red and, or green and blue just, you know, for gigs. Gold canopy, but a black frame. But I don't think I'm going to do that for these guys. In the frame, it looks like these are really far away and this is really close. And when I, when I hold these models, I do make the pew pew sound as they're flying around. Of course. Yeah, of course. Gloss uh, varnish. Of course, I need those big Sam Han symbols on there. I also, um, before sealing the model, I also reinforced the uh, white of the transfer. Basically, just painted over it with white paint, just to make it like nice and solid. Because the chevron actually showed through the transfer. So, yeah. But yeah. try and make them as identical as possible. Yeah. Okay, don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, right? But, yeah, so normally the guns, I do them black, but I don't think so on this size of scale. And also the underside of the plane is not quite as detailed as the upper portion because, well, quite frankly, you don't really see, uh, you know, the underside of the plane too much. And, of course, it's also magnetized so that uh, this is how I did the stands at the time. These were the uh, Valkyrie stands. And, yeah. And I just basically secure it. Uh, I, did I cut a little wedge into it? I can't remember. Yeah, I think I, I, I cut out a little space in the plastic, set the magnet down, and then surrounded it with green stuff to make it nice and secure. And then, yeah, just bang. Boom. There we go. Bing, bang, boom. There it is. But anyway, yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to make these things look more like my big versions and in fact I think I'll do all the chevrons just like I did my smaller ones uh red gore or gore red is that what it was called damn I can't remember what was the mid-tone red called back in the day was it blood angel red yeah Oh, yeah. Kim was. Kim said he can't hear you, but Boops hasn't been talking. <laughs> so 
I'm not sure uh, what Kim's on. It is kind of late in the day for Kim, though. Well, and for Shu. Maybe, maybe Kim's relaxing. Painting. Or he's speed painting, one of the two. Or what we would call speed painting, he would call painting. <laughs> well, what I would call speed painting, I would call painting on speed. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to get a th fucking thing done. Be too goddamn tweaked out. I am working on my aeronautica. Aeronautica. Yeah. My little pew pew planes. For pew pewing. And how's Mr. Boop today? Oh, pretty good. Good, good to hear. It's been busy. Yeah. Real life stuff. Yeah. Well, I messaged you part of it, but yeah, real life stuff. Yeah. Well, you gotta take care of the real life every once in a while, right? Can't be all fun and games. I mean, it could, but I just get dirty looks from people. Fuck them. True. You could fuck them all. Fuck what? Fuck all the day. <laughs> but you'd be busy all day long. You'd be busy. And tired. That's fine. <laughs> just saying. You'd be tired if you had to fuck them all. I'm just getting tired just thinking about it. <laughs> Everybody else did it. Right? Hey, what did everybody else do today? Made a website. <laughs> of course. It's begrudgingly made a website. Oh, is it like for work? No, no, no. It's a, it's a website for the Makerspace tutorial. Uh, there are some functions on Wix that I would really wish were there. And then most of the function I wish functions I wish were there, uh, I'll just have to, you know, try. Look for them. I'm not a web developer, I'm a fucking musician. <laughs> Same here. I mean, I took this shit in school, but goddamn. I don't got time for that. Those pew pew planes to be painted. Yeah, you know, I'm more concerned with the pew pew than I am fucking building a secure website. <laughs> Priorities, man. Priorities. What about you, Boop? What'd you do this weekend? Anything interesting? Not a whole lot. No? That's all right. Well, not a whole lot. Pretty close to the limit. Yep. Yeah. You know, so I was talking about before you jumped into chat was um, it's kind of hard to concentrate on shit right now. Just the state of things.
Ah, uh, Greenleaf Terrain. That plan sounds bad. Kim, was not Blood Angel red more orange? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember what the hell. Before there was an Evil Sun Scarlet, right? Well, this is, this is the Citadel Air, but... It was a Blood Red. Was it Blood Red? Maybe it was Blood Red. That sounds about right. Of course... We're talking about... Before they started using Evil Sun Scarlet. Yeah, before using, like, the really crazy-ass names? Yeah. Yeah, it was Blood Red. It was Blood Red? Yeah, okay. I think. I think so. I, th I think you might be right. Mm -hmm. So, anyway... What's that? The twist cap ones? Uh, no, they were flip top. Um, they were more like... Well, yeah, there was the no, twist was caps. The, yeah, no, that was the flip top with the whites. Yeah. White plastic. Yeah, I never had those. But the, the ones I'm talking about, though, they're... <laughs> they're uh, like funny shape. Yeah, the hexagonal. Oh, yeah, not the... Uh, the uh, I, I remember the twist top ones, but the hexagonal ones. Yeah, they're, they're, those were fucking garbage. Oh, yeah. If if we were in that state of of with Citadel and you know the paints and everything like that, yeah, I'd be trashing Citadel paint all the time because those fucking paint pots were the worst. <clears throat> you still remember the smell? Well, it wasn't so much the smell; it's just the fucking things. Like as soon as you opened it, that was it. You you had to use the whole bottle, otherwise that sh that pot was gonna dry out. Yeah, because like the, the the pots never sealed properly again once at, once opened, and if you wanted to try and preserve your paint, you had to store them upside down. Because then that way the liquid forms a quick seal, which basically is just drying paint at the edge, so that air more air can't get in. Which was fucking stupid. So yeah, and I mean like I'm I'm on board when people are talking about shitting on paint pots from those days. I 100% agree. Today, not so much. <clears throat> but yeah, those were the worst. I can't imagine anybody who who bought the big mega sets of those, all those with all those colors like that in those paint pots. Oh, those things were. Well, Chris, they were cool. They were shaped like bolters, you know. <laughs> Was that the selling point of them? No, but the way... You, or maybe it was the flip-top hexagonal. Flip-top hexagonals, I know, like, that the, that lid shape for it was, like, looked like a bolter shell. I'm trying to see. Do I have any of that old paint pot around? Might have one kicking around. Only because, just to show people the dangers of them. I don't think that was the selling point, but they were... I remember that paint pot. And, uh, oh, this getting caught. There's pictures in my space when you saw that cool bolt show. Because they're like, oh, that's, that's so cool. It looks like a bolt door show. <laughs> no, I don't have one around. I was using one as a painting handle at one point. But. Oh, I'm sure I probably still have one kicking around. But anyway, yeah, here. This one here, okay, well, here's the really old Citadel paint pots. These are just like um, coat to arms. And then the hexagonals had basically the same caps. They're the same size, right? And these are the old Citadel color hexagonals. And this paint should still be good. Because these things, yeah, it's, it's still liquidy in there. Yeah. And this is paint... <laughs> Fuck, I don't know when this was. 17.5 mil... Oh, subscribe and thank you. Uh, Sergen Karan? Subscribe with Prime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sereg? Serg? Sereg? Anyway. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, 17.5 milliliters or 0.62 fluid ounces made in the UK. Warning, eye irritant. Who the fuck is putting this in their eye? I would be surprised. I guess I'd be surprised. I mean, full-grown adults are eating fucking Tide Pods, so you'd be surprised. True. That's pretty good, though. That, 
warning, it's an eye irritant. It contains... Oh, really? 2-phenol... Phenooxythenol. Oxythenol? Yeah. Phenooxythenol. So I assume that's some sort of alcohol, but I think a lot of water-based acrylics do have a certain degree of uh, alcohol in them. Precautions. Keep out of reach of children. Keep away from eyes. Oh no. Avoid ingestion. Just avoid it. Don't ingest it. Don't do it, kids. Don't, Don't do it. Think about it. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Are you thinking about it? Because it looks like you're thinking about it. First aid is if eye contact occurs, rinse with tap water. Don't use bottled water for five to ten minutes. Oof. If irritation continues, seek medical care. For further health information, contact a poison control center. Good God. I wonder if this phone number is still good. It's for Baltimore. Is it, is it a GW number? Yeah, you want, you want me to read off the number? It, it won't take the time. No? It's area code 410-644-1400. Yeah, it's in Maryland. They, they don't have that office in Brown County. Yeah, no, I just want someone to call it, though. Well, it's even recyclable. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. Yeah, these are the old paint pots. Um... I don't have the uh, old plastic, clear plastic hexagonal. I don't have one nearby. I thought I was using one recently for a fucking painting angle. Uh, God dang it. Uh, it wouldn't have paint in it because the fucking paint would be long dried out. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, back to work. Uh, <laughs> Sophie, didn't you do a video of doing the transfers for that flyer? I'm sure I remember a clip of you putting them on, or it could be just deja vu. It could be deja vu. Um, I might have done it on another stream on the other plane, because not all my Phoenix Bombers all look the same. I have four Phoenix Bombers. I have two regular Phoenix Bombers, and I have two of the um, the Dragon one. It's got extra details on its hull. Uh, disco, afternoon all. Afternoon, Disco. Kim, uh, they are Gore Red and Scab Red, so it got to be one of those, yeah. Corn Red and Mephiston Red, I could see. Hmm. Greenleaf. I tried to shit into a GW paint pot with horrible results. <laughs> Good God, man. Why on earth would you try and shit into a paint pot? <laughs> this is, this is it is Adam. Yes, it is Adam. Adam is kind of freaky. <laughs> What's that? Said Annie should go to bed. Annie probably should go to bed, do some colored lights. Let's do some colored lights. I wonder if I can do rainbow. Let's do rainbow. Strobe? Oi, shit. That's not strobe. Is it strobing? How about flash? That's a live stream of Chris about the blind and he's just... Flash. Flash, damn you. No. Fade. Oi. It's not doing fuck all. Smooth. Canadian man blinds himself during a Twitch. Can I turn the light up? No, oh, is that going down? Going up or down? Fuck it, I no longer care. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? Let's go with... Yeah, let's go with that one. Ooh, yeah, it's a nice... It's a nice teal. It's teal. Uh, Kim, I had the full set of those uh, sold in the metal case, those old hex pots with the twist lids. Still have the suitcase. Do you still have the suitcase? Really? Post, post a pic in, uh, in in Discord, Kim. I'd like to see. I mean, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember what the case looked like. I just remember it was in White Dwarves for a while because it was like this big mega case that they were selling. God. 
thinking of those paint pods just pisses me off. I'm 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 angry. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it's just oh, those fucking paint pods, man. Again, if yeah, like if they were still doing those paint pots, yeah, I I would not be a big fan of Citadel, in any measure. The current system, yeah, it's pretty darn it's pretty darn consistent and you know decent. Yeah, you still get some of the uh, gunk building up in the caps, but you're always going to have that. I mean, even dropper style bottles gunk up in the caps. I mean, look at how that look how dirty that nozzle is. Got to take care of your nozzles, people. Yeah, you don't want too much gunk in your nozzle because, you know, <sighs> I'm not going to lie. That turns people off. <laughs> that's, that's some advice for y'all. Some life advice. Clean the gunk from your know. nozzles. I don't know if I should tell this, but there is a story. Uh oh. Okay, I'm all ears. Go. About a uh, girl who had the preference for gunk in the nozzle. Oh, okay, never mind. No, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, no. No, I don't want to hear it. No, that's nasty. <laughs> it's like, I want to hear it. Yeah, no, <laughs> never mind. I changed my mind. No, I don't want to hear it. No. It's too late. You can't back out now. Yeah, no, no. No, I'm not even curious. I, I, mainly because. I know of a similar case, and so no, I no, I, no, 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 please God, no. Good God, man. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, doing a, a fake kind of shitty British accent is fun. <laughs> as long as you know it's shitty and it, and it's not accurate. If you th if you think that you're doing a, uh, an English accent, and you know you think you're doing it well, when you're not, that's just too comical. Oh, to me. <laughs> I know I'm shit. <laughs> right, but I mean, like you're 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 kind of closer to England than we are. Like in distance, not. And I think people on this side, at least myself, um, I kind of imagine that, you know, because the countries are so close together and, you know, so many different cultures and close proximity and such, like, I'd imagine people just go to other countries just for gigs all the time, right? Or, or do I have that yeah. completely wrong? We usually tend to take a trip over to Haiti for our cheap energy drinks, cigarettes, and tobacco products meat meat is a tobacco product and meat oh <laughs> it's gotta say meat. tobacco meat good god <laughs> good god man in Norway they get bad for that do we <laughs> what's that I didn't catch that it's because wheat is a tobacco product hopefully most meat did you know that in Norway they give cows meat? Do they? No. Oh. You had me going. You fooled me. Uh, Kim, my little brother, popped by unannounced with the Gene Series, cutting half of the Shadows box for me. Cool. He's going to paint them all up. Get some Gen Steelers. Scandinavian cows. The actor, I can't remember his name now, but the actor that plays uh, the dad in Rogue One. Uh huh. Think you've seen, yes. I, I just remember the scene in the movie where he shoots the cow. <laughs> That's probably a Danish thing. Maybe we were shooting Danish thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, just remember the scene. He's just sitting there like he's like like a like out of prison criminal for like three points. Trying to solve his shit. He's just staring at a cow on the side of the room. As one does. I nicked a spot. 
God dang it. Sophie, you didn't want to know. Yuck. <laughs> I know that's fucking gross. Uh, Sophie, let's hear your English accent, Chris. Oh, man. I, no way. I'm not doing it. No way. It's too, sh it's too shitty. <laughs> Kim, no, we travel a lot within Europe. We that live here, yeah. No, I, I kind of figured as much. I mean, like, because, I mean, like, Canada is a pretty big place, but not a lot of Canadians um, travel to other areas very often, mainly, mainly because it, it, of cost. It is fairly expensive to travel in Canada uh, versus, like, in the States. In the States, it feels like everybody... Uh, who lives in a town in the states? They're not. They're never really from that town. They're from another place, another other side of the country, kind of thing. And I would guess that's because of the American infrastructure, right? There's so many highways, so many ways for people to get around, and of course, it doesn't really cost that much to hop on a plane and you know go to another town, right? Whereas in Canada, it's expensive, expensive to travel, and we don't have good low cost options like a train we don't have any you know cross-country trains right base what's that is that supposed to be low cost a train yeah yeah well i mean in the states it, it's it's like riding a greyhound bus not the same it's actually you can be quite comfortable because a few years ago i was i was picking up uh, first class tickets for a train to go from Buffalo, New York to Chicago for Adepticon. And I figured, well, shit, I mean, I might as well go through the night. It's going to be like a seven, eight hour ride on the train and it's like a nine hour drive. So I was like, fuck, I'll take the train. I'll sleep the whole way there and wake up fresh as a daisy and, you know, begin running amok. Yeah, we're going to paint those undersides of black. A lot of people But we don't need bullet trains because if you can get from New York to LA in hours, it's quicker to take a plane than it is to get on a bullet train. Right. Well, because of the vast distances, right? Yeah. Yeah. But. Like the next mile, but our, our, our slow commuter trains still got Because we just haven't needed to make them that. Right. But my, my, my point being, though, is that America's infrastructure is far better for moving people and materials around than Canada's. Canada's is quite fucking primitive and backward. Which is why you don't get too many Canadians who are from other areas of Canada in places. And that's actually not very good because that can contribute to, um, you know, these isolationist type of vibes, right? Kind of people who are, you know, well, this is the kind of place that I grew up in and this is how it should be. And, you know, that kind of attitude. Oh, shit, I just ran my finger off that, damn it. What you're saying is the reason why all ten Canadians have been nice is they haven't been exposed to each other. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly kind of like how in the states, you know, there are people from states that hate each other just because they're from other states. Right. Yeah, because like when I was living in Memphis, um, man, everybody I talked to, nobody was from Memphis. Nobody, very few of them were from Tennessee. Most of the people I met and worked with, yeah, they were, um, they were from other places. And it just kind of, it struck me at the time because like, well, it makes sense because there's so many ways of getting around uh, in the States than there is in Canada. Canada, it's not uncommon to run into people who have lived in that town even the big centers, all their lives. 
that's not unusual. Whereas I feel like in the States, it would be unusual, right? Because, well, like it's a common thing for Americans to go away to school, to go to another country or not country, another uh, state or county or, you know what I mean? Like, or on the other side of the country, right? So that's a very common thing. Whereas Canada, that's uncommon. There's not many Canadians who, who do that, who go from say, who are from Ontario and then go to BC or go to Alberta for school, right? There's not many that do it. There are some, but it's not, it doesn't seem as prevalent as America where, you know, people from the West Coast can go to school in the East Coast and vice versa. Like, I was just saying to the U.S. somebody, I don't know, California saying, I'm going to go to the University of Alabama. Nobody bats a fucking eye, nobody goes fly. It's just like... <laughs> right, exactly. That's exactly it, right? <clears throat> I was going to write a Yeah, well, I, like, yeah, it was a few years ago. I was going to take the uh, first class, and, um... Part of my reasoning is, is you're allowed more luggage, and it's cheaper for extra luggage. So I can take two suitcases. I can take one for clothes and, you know, what I'm bringing with me, and the other one's just there for shit I buy. Right. Loot. It's cheaper, because, you know, air you gotta pay and it's extra. Yes, yes. Yeah, and that was the other reason, too. Yeah, it was because at the time, I was going to be bringing uh, my case with all um, all the, the painting gear to do classes. But after a couple times of doing that... I don't drive and I don't take just because I would imagine more the way the bus people will be than us do during bus weekend. At least here I'm, I'm packing light. Because it's looking like it's just from at least the way of the rush. I mean, I know other people going, but just from the way of the rush, it looks like it's just going to be like me, Matt, and like maybe like Todd. Like. Right. Well, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch. It's just because I'm sure there's plenty of people going who, you know, obviously aren't as vocal as, you know, some of the other monkeys, right? Yeah, I don't know people I know going. There's only like two or three. Yeah. And the thing is, is right now, uh, Canada has lifted a lot of restrictions. And I like how they really didn't give us any kind of prior notice that they were going to do that. Like, months ago. Unless, of course, maybe I wasn't paying attention. True. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she gets it. No idea what you're talking about. That's right, sheep. Just keep playing dumb. I said, sheep, you gonna give me all your models? Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some of the models to get rid of. <laughs> Do you want 250 all space wings? <laughs> Who doesn't? I wonder if the next breakthrough for paints will be something like contrast, but a metallic. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'm not sure how it worked though, but because nanobots. the way yeah, it would have to be nanobots, right? Because I mean, like. This stuff, on the edges, it goes bright, and when you get into details and stuff, it gets dark. So metallics would pull away from edges and get really bright in the insides. And that's typically not what you want with metallics. I'm sure they gave it a try. I'm sure they did. So can we do this with metallics? And they're like, nope not happening except they said it with a British accent you 
I think it was something it was something to the like of uh, well fate was the last time it could be and then somebody got choked out yeah yeah It'd be pretty tough times working at games workshop if that were the case get fucking choked out this wasn't the right model no <laughs> Uh, didn't paint the box art properly. Oh no! <laughs> I'm sure there's probably some higher ups in there too that probably are like, "Yeah, I wish I could choke somebody." Out. I'm sure. Happens everywhere. People wanted to choke custom clubs? Yeah. Isn't there? Isn't that a common thing? Or is that just me? Depends on what kind of choking. Like aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I can fucking mean it. <laughs> Spit in my mouth and call me scum. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. I mean, yeah, no, I, that's what I meant. Fuck okay. <laughs> it. What? Spit in my mouth and call me Rebel Scout. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do it with the, uh, the uh, Peter Cushion voice. You may choke me when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's good. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, shit. Sophie, trains here are rubbish. They run when they feel like it. The company is called Northern Rail, but everybody calls them Northern Fail. Ha oh, it's clever. There's there's some of that English wit. Also Southern Failers. What's that? There's also Southern Failers. Oh. <laughs> Joke Wednesday, apparently. It's open mic night. Who's mic and how do we open him? <laughs> Carefully. Oh. That would be a fun fucking show. What, opening somebody up? Jesus. No. Oh, well. I was aiming to be a pathologist. Once. For finding paths? Yeah. <laughs> Inside human bodies. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> when I was younger, I wanted to be a bounty hunter. Something about hunting down people just seems fun to me. Traveling the galaxy. No. Just breaking. Deals with us. Just breaking into people's homes, tasing them and cuffing them. Bring them in warm. Get your own theme song. Yeah. My theme song would probably sound something like the uh, shitty flute Jurassic Park theme. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> like a predator with shitty flutes. Yeah, with the shitty flutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be my theme song for sure.
I kind of want to listen to the shitty flute version right now. Because <laughs> another good one is the uh, Michael Myers theme in Shitty Flute. Mm. If you're familiar with Michael Myers. Yeah. Not the actor. Awfully quiet today. You guys hung over or what? Huh? <laughs> I ask if we're hung over and boop is the first one to chime in. What? <laughs> <laughs> Not paying attention. <laughs> it's alright. Neither am I. Sometimes I start to feel really ambitious as I'm painting these things, and then suddenly I'm like, why? Just get it done, man. I'm going to start playing some games. I mean, I could already be playing games right now. I've, I've got the Tau and the Imperials done. But it's the Eldar, man. Freaking Eldar. Beep boop beep beep boop beep beep beep. beep. <laughs> ale door. Yeah, some ale door. Crossbear words. Get me some of them goddamn ale doors. Want to hear some shitty accents? There we go. Get me some <laughs> ale doors. Old man Logan, hey there, Chris. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good, bud. <laughs> guy? That's your guy, friend. Oh. Now then, well, we'll get this one base coated up, but then we will do probably the gold next. Um, I'll probably bust up my scale 75. Just because it's nice and thin. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll use the Turbo Dork. Well, if I use the Turbo Dork, I probably should do the canopies in black then. I mean, if, even if I do them scale 75, I'll have to do them black as well. Now nah, we'll try it with it. Uh, we'll use some Turbo Dork. Because the Turbo Dork's got some nice gold color. Assassin's case of paints. Let's move this guy out of the way. Oh shit, fuck up. Ah, oh, fuck up all my shit. Oh, for fuck's sake. Send everything flying. Get back. Get back there. Alright. 
Let's see here. We got this yellow. Yuzu. What's that? How would you pronounce that? Yuzu. Uzu. Um, pucker. Yuzu. Pucker's kind of nice. Oh, bee's knees. There we go. I think that's what color we're gonna use. We're gonna use bee's knees. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Hot commodity. Damn it. That's a nice one too. Look at that. It's very very warm. In fact, bee's knees and hot commodity. I mean, lay that down as the base and then use that just as like a little dot of highlight. Hmm. Maybe we'll go that route. Momo? Momo? Yeah, I think we're going to do that. And now the question becomes, how well will it sit on top of a red base or should I put a little bit of black in there before laying this down. Oh, I haven't even opened these freaking colors yet. Still got the little... Can I ever put something back and then immediately lose track of it? Yeah. Happens all the time. I'm old, though. So... That, that on my super glue. It picked up the bottle to clip off, you know, the resin case or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, where the fuck did I put my super glue? <laughs> Old man Logan had to watch the TIE fighter clip again. Gets me every time. <laughs> yeah. I need to shut myself. <laughs> yeah. And believe it or not, my I asked my son, "Did you hear me?" And he's like, "Hear you what?" And I was like, "You didn't hear me screaming down there." And he's no. Damn. It's usually, I'm pretty. Uh, usually, it's pretty quiet, and I can hear them upstairs pretty good. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Beep boop beep beep boo. Can't stop singing that to myself now. Oi. Hiroki subscribed. Thank you. Hiroki. Hiroki. I never know if I'm saying that right. Hero K? Okay? Anyway, thank you for the subscription. What's that? How's he doing? Not Hero K. It's a fucking dad joke for sure. I'm ready. <laughs> Why, are you going to be a dad? <laughs> no. Oh. Why'd you chuckle like that? Like, fuck no. I wonder if anybody's ever done like a, a shitty redub of Star Wars. Oh yeah, uh, there's one. It's in uh, Danish, I think, where it's all about space priests. <laughs> no, no, but I'm talking like shitty sound effects, like it, like. For TIE Fighters, it's me screaming. Uh, well, if there's any monkeys out there with some editing skills, you know what to do. There's a Turkish Star Wars knockoff. Is it the one that's on Pornhub? No. Oh. Huh. Because I've watched that like ten times. Why they didn't get an Oscar, I'll never know. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, <laughs> old man, Logan. Selective hearing. They have learned to ignore you. Pos possibly. Um, Hiroki. Chris, what sound does the Eldar Flyer make? Can you educate us, please? Um, honestly? I don't know. Um... Were you going to say boop? The actual title of what everybody calls Turkish Star Wars is The Man Who Saved the World. So everybody just kind of calls it Turkish Star Wars. Oh. 
it's not, you know, it's not dubbed over Star Wars, but it's, um, knock off Star Wars, I guess you could say. Like, knock it off Star Wars, or? No? It's not, you know, it's not Star Wars dubbed over, but it, it's, it, you know, an actual movie filmed in Turkey. That takes, um, that, that moves off the popularity of uh, Star Wars. Gotcha. Not that uh, Star Wars' plot is bashfulness, but it's a fair it's way special to me, boo. It's special to me, boo. Well, unique, because you're all like, you know, the trope has been done in books and stuff, but, uh, it's a funny watch. I recommend people watch it. Uh, you can actually watch it for free on HBO. Eldar Flyers. Are they fueled by spirits and wits and shit? I've always interpreted it as such. I've always interpreted their technology, their power plants and everything, to be uh, warp based. What if the engines are just constantly screwing? But it's Eldar's, so would the they... The Banshee's way. Right. I hear ya. I think you're just trying to get me to scream, but... Oh, no. <laughs> I would be way more subtle. <laughs> <laughs> I would build it up. <laughs> Did you do the tie fighter through the bill? <laughs> No, it, just more feminine this time, like a banshee. <laughs> I don't know, like, because I mean, like, normally if I'm, I'm if I'm farting around making the sounds kind of thing, it's usually a kind of, shh, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, I don't know what an Eldar jet would sound like. I would imagine it'd probably have. <sighs> Knowing forty k, I'm gonna be honest. It probably sounds like any other jet. <laughs> Right, I'd, I'd imagine, yeah, like if you were to see these in some sort of animated program or, you know, live action, whatever, right, video game, it probably has some sort of crazy, normal kind of, like, jet engine sound, but, you know, crank to 11 kind of thing, right? But I imagine more Imperial shit being really loud and Eldar stuff being more ear-piercing. Pe so, um, stand next to an actual jet, okay, that's an Eldar sound. Now, um, <laughs> turn it up, you know, volume by, you know, double. Okay, that's Imperial. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I'd imagine Imperial stuff, like, that would, like, every, you know, crew would be, you know, deaf. Deaf if they didn't have means to. Yeah, the, the, I'm sure safety regulations uh, don't exist in the Imperium. I don't know. I mean, maybe for, like, things like guards, but, um... I don't know. Uh, it could be like, well, um, it's just cheaper to not train another pilot. Let's give this guy, like, you know, your cuffs. <laughs> no, no, uh, but I'm talking about the deckhands, like the guys who get the ships ready. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, they would probably def yeah, in. Like, uh, like, on the really big ships where, like, you know, dudes are literally sitting in the engine room. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sure there's no OSHA safety standards. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, there's nobody in there saying, well, be sure to wear your hearing uh, protection. Because it's it's the Imperium, right? I mean, like... I mean, they're all probably all signatories anyway, so it doesn't matter if they go deaf because they're robots. True. Very, very true. Or, Cyborgs. Cy cyborgs. Yeah. But you get what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. It I get It doesn't matter if they were deaf or not, because uh, in the Master of Mankind... Um, those servitors that have like the heavy bolters that replace an arm. Yeah. When they shoot, their teeth literally rattle and break apart. <laughs> like that's described as what happens when they shoot that heavy bolter attached to their arm. Right. So, I don't think if there are any normal humans down there. I would imagine maybe they might actually be skilled, but I'd imagine a lot of those engine shit are uh, mostly observatory. Um, 
So yeah, I, I honestly, Heroku, or Hero K, um, yeah, I honestly have no idea what they would sound like. I mean, it's always kind of a, yeah, a whoosh sound. Like, I'd imagine the difference between an Imperial craft, any of them, is it's a loud, thunderous, and the, the jet engine sound would probably have that more like, um, like 1950s jet engine sound, as opposed to a modern jet right that's that's the difference i see it it's an older clunkier sound over a modern sound which is more of a high-pitched whistle yeah that's how i would describe it so what sound is that um i don't know it's not really a scream <laughs> <laughs> and then also if it was eldar i'd also throw in a bit of a, a reverb and uh a little bit of something else in there just to kind of give it a bit of an alien sound because who knows what it would sound like right uh sereg the flyers sound like a breeze to a strand a stand of birch trees with hidden canadian screaming jeez yeah. god damn that that sounds grim <laughs> <laughs> canadians hiding in the trees man gotta watch out Ain't fucking around, man. There's Canucks in the trees, man. <laughs> They're coming out of the igloos, man. Coming out of the goddamn igloos. <laughs> fucking people are everywhere. They can't be everywhere. There's only ten. Yeah, they're everywhere, man. There's only ten. They're everywhere. Dimensional Canadians. Canadians have a teleporting device powered off of people's hair to go with. Have you ever heard of the single electron theory? Everything's just a single electron that moves back and forth between stages? Right. Yeah, exactly. It's every every electron that we observe, it is a single electron at some point in its existence as it travels throughout the universe. Oh, it's just kind of, it, 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 it's everywhere at once. It's the single Canadian theory. <laughs> it's a single Canadian theory. <laughs> exactly it. That's exactly what I was getting at. Shit, I'm going to have to write whoever came up with this theory and go, um, excuse me, you're wrong. It's not actually electrons. It's a single Canadian. It's a single Canadian. Everybody else is made up of multiple electrons except the Canadians. That's why they're everywhere and nowhere. <laughs> yeah. That's how they can uh, hang on to a vast territory like Canada. Be everywhere all at once. And nowhere at the same time. Yeah, and nowhere at the same time. It might work. <clears throat> you might get some naysayers about the theory, but you know, if, if, if it stands up to scrutiny and testing, we'll have to test your hypothesis, though. Not if I post it on the internet first. <laughs> True. <laughs> People will believe me. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because if it's on the internet, it's got to be real, right? I mean, heaven's gate was real. It was. I watched this program um, about, like, it was, about the, it was about the 90s, like the dark days of the 90s kind of thing. And, of course, there was a section on Heaven's Gate. Dark days of the 90s. Yeah. Man, that was, that was a goofy-ass cult. I mean, yeah. most cults are goofy, but, yeah. That one was... Would that be one where they, he convinced everybody to drink fruit punch? Uh, it was poison. Yeah. No, they all knew it was poison. Yeah, they, they all knew. They weren't tricked. Uh -huh. They all willingly did it. They were all wearing their Nikes and track suits. And yeah, the, there was a, a comet passing through the solar system at the time. And yeah, and they they said, oh, there's, there's our ride. Our ship, there's a, our mothership is tailing that comet. We're going to kill ourselves and shed ourselves of these uh, corporeal forms. And rejoin the mothership. Yeah. 
Now, this is, might be an unpopular opinion, but if people want to do that kind of shit, I say let them. Good old Darwinism? Yeah. That's, that's Darwinism manifest. The let only em. reason I remember that cult is because people keep thinking my name is a reference to that comic. Oh, yeah. Hell boop. But it's not. It's just a sheer coincidence. You know what? I've never made that connection. Um, I don't know why. Just, yeah. I, I, because it's not a reference to that. Yeah. Is it a reference to some sort of band or something? No, it's just a joke on the Hail of Satan. Oh. Well, there you go. <laughs> Speaking of cults. <laughs> 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 not really like a reference. I know it's not something we all know. It's just a fucking joke. <laughs> you know, people say that. Yeah. You know, it's... Plate and all that shit. Just be like, oh, boo. <laughs> There's, nothing really... There's nothing really deep or, or meaningful. <laughs> it was just a fucking joke. For a while, I used to use um, before that, like my Twitch handle was I Print Paper. Like that's the extent of my humor when I was like in high school. <laughs> Boop! Don't quit your day job. <laughs> I know. I'm sure you really? probably feel that tug of hitting the road and um, you know spreading that comedy elsewhere, but. I wouldn't quit your day job, but Because I like it. But I'm a fucking moron, so. Or no, it's generous, I'm sorry. And people would go, well, what kind of paper do you print? And you just wrote paper. <laughs> like toilet paper? I just print paper. It's just paper. Do you always bust into a Jimmy Stewart voice? Huh? Do you always bust into a Jimmy Stewart voice when you're explaining it? No. No. Just me. Oh. I lied. <laughs> well, I heard of the round kids in there. <laughs> it's just paper. Damn it, Bobby. God damn it, Bobby. I think going to that electron theory, I think it's quite possible that uh, Canadians could just be an elder female. An elder cult? Yeah. It's entirely possible. Um, the data does support it. I mean, Chris knows he lives amongst the Canadians. Amongst, yeah. Yeah, because you, you, you keep saying you're not actually a true Canadian. Well, I'm not. Whatever, legally speaking. Well, nothing legal or illegal about it. I'm just not. not I'm not a citizen yeah. of Canada. He's not a, not a Canadian. But he lives amongst them. Sure. Have you seen any of them grow, like, multiple more eyes? More yeah. than one eye? Yes. Yes, I have. See? See? Like, I've seen Canadians do many strange things. <laughs> The reason why we don't see it is because Chris saves us from them every day. Yeah. What do you think he's doing on the ground? He's always in cults. Like he's got a like he's got probably got a big a big giant like sword somewhere. I do have a sword. That like a Final Fantasy protagonist would have or something. Oh, okay, maybe not that big. <laughs> not that big. <laughs> no, it's not that big. This is properly mixed. 
This one. Might need a little bit more. Oh yeah, I can still see the medium sitting there. I'm gonna try this out. Kingdom Death? Yeah, it's having the darkness. Oh. Is that a movie? No, it's a it's a game. Oh, the ninjas or something? In game? Kingdom Death. Kingdom Death. I don't know why this one. Ooh, look at those guys. I'm putting together the hospitality. Quite literally like a uh, 18 or, or like 19th, early 20th century nerd with the night home. So, so it's actually completely different from most of the minis that they put out. <laughs> it's either Eldritch Horrors or Girls with Massive. Yeah, it's neither actually. It's literally just like in twenty early twentieth century nerd wearing night home. That's why I got it. Because they do good minis, but um I don't use famous monsters, so they don't even go use on my like D and D page one. Wait, there's a famous monster? Oh yeah. There's there's even a model, she has a dress of penises. Yeah. That model Satan. Yeah, Satan. That's it. Hail boot. And it's actually twins. One has a dress made of this. The other one has a dress made of tongue. Oh, damn it. I must leave but they do nice there. minis, like detailed minis, but um, I have to wait for the, uh, you know, actual, like, good tame mini they put out every once in a while. It's a game. Yeah. If it's a game. People like co op like RPG style games don't necessarily go to just like you have to be really good at it. Um, it can take a while, like a like a campaign season now it would take a while. Since they have like a where where would the model where did they mill this? They, they swap them out every year. They only do like limited runs. They'll rerun stuff, but it's like they do a, they have their box game and then all the uh, extra models they'll run occasionally. When's the penis monster at? <laughs> Give us more penis monsters. <laughs> yeah, I've got a that will make people go, what the fuck is that? I want it. I've got one on my desk right now that I have not finished. Where the hell is she? There she is. It's uh, called an Ammo Slave. Started working on her a while ago. And she has this little bit that goes on her. She's basically holding like this uh, box of ammunition and shit. But yeah. Just tiny figures. I mean, they do some that are larger, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're really detailed for their size. Too. Oh, very. Yeah. No, they're good minis. I'm not buying every release. I have to wait for like a one that I'm like I would actually go and use at like the store when I'm playing D and D. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I find myself mixing this paint quite a bit here. I can't tell if this is the way yeah, it's supposed to be. 
whoever sculpts your stuff and does your artwork gets really fancy. I think I have it properly mixed in. So I'm still farting around with hot commodity. Huh? No, I'm just showing what pink I'm playing with here. It's, it's taken quite a bit to mix this up, but I think I suspect a lot of my turbo dorks have, because they've sat for quite a while. Like this paint was not even opened, and like when I laid a little bit out, I could see like this fair amount of medium sitting in the suspension. So I don't think it's supposed to be like that. So I'm just making sure this is thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. Yeah. You have to clear that with army paint on hands too, because he's like a gel medium. There's like little bit, but it's just straight, just gel medium. Yeah. So I just want to make sure I'm using this properly. Yeah, it looks about the same. I know some of the colors, they do actually look um, like they have quite a bit of um, medium in them. I mean, like one layer, and it looks pretty darn cool. But I like to have a really saturated look. That's a lot better. there. Oh, it has a different consistency to it. give me the same brightness this feels like it's mixed also helps the fact that they were big like throw that a lot of it just kind of overlapped and the stuff would join together. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's how it's supposed to look.
it's kind of funny how the way the the metallic shifts like these aren't shifts i don't think they're shifts no they're just regular metallic paint it's just funny how the color like when you're looking at it at certain angles it looks still really dark but then once the light hits it man it just like radiates kind of funny like you see from that angle it looks really dark and then when you bring it into light it goes really bright hmm at first I wasn't crazy about that characteristic but now I'm kind of digging it just as the as the, the light plays on the surface It's interesting anyway. Trying to decide whether or not I want to keep with that. Ah, we'll try. We'll figure it out. I'm gonna do these other canopies first. Comsolence, what do you have on your desktop that you use it as a palette? That's pretty cool. Uh, it's just a big piece of tempered glass. It's just my work surface. And then it, the blue is actually just um, cardboard, like a, you know, like a sh just Bristol board sheet, right? Just a thin piece of colored paper underneath. And the only reason I use the glass palette is because, well, when I'm demonstrating paint and stuff like that on camera and such and in videos, uh, it's just easier to clean up. Like basically I just use a, a razor blade. I just spritz it with Windex, use a razor blade, just blade the paint off and away you go. The, the glass itself is a big piece of tempered glass. It's um, a quarter inch thick. So yeah, that's it. That's all. It's the only reason I use the glass is because, uh, it's easy to clean between uh, takes and stuff. There's no mystical reason or anything like that for it. Not like you're uh, missing out on a, a secret of the pros kind of thing or anything like that. Why did we use flooring tiles as palettes? Yep, flooring tiles. I remember that. Is it a GW store? Yep. I used to use um, margarine container lids for the longest time. I liked them because. Um, when there was a huge buildup of paint, it was pretty easy to uh, lift the paint off because you could basically just give the little margin container lid a, twi a quick twist and the whole thing would just pop right off. <coughs> yeah, exactly, right? I mean, but it's tempered glass, so the shit would explode. Non tempered glass. Yeah. Which I managed to cut myself on today, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, you take the edges. Well, I've used um, like cheap dollar store picture frames and used the glass from those. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm using. Yeah. And I have a teeny tiny pane, like a teeny tiny mirror. For, um, moving, moving about. for when you're doing lines of coke or what? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Funny as you say that, I brought. Uh, I usually I paint at work, so people ask me, "Why the fuck do you have a mirror?" Why don't you tell me, fourteen-year-old boy? Why do I have a mirror? And then they get all red. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have the mirror? You say. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do 
do this instead. Why the fuck are my paints so cold? It's not cold in here. I'm going to switch over to uh, Dwarven Gold from Scale 75. Kim, should the new Altark also have a camo, camo pattern on its cloak? Opinion? Um, should it? No. I think the camo cloaks are more the purview of the rangers and such and the shroud runners. Can the Autark have a camo cloak? Yes, he can. Because the Autark is supposed to have walked many different paths. And so an Autark who walked the path of the outcast, which is the rangers, could just as easily have retained his cloak as he became an Autark, right? So being an Autark with a camo cloak, sure, totally can. It's in the lore because an autark walks many paths now mind you i mean the autark who walks the path of the cook you know i mean <laughs> i don't know how well he is good at commanding but <laughs> the path of the chef But yeah, I mean, Kim, it's, you know, it's up to you. I mean, if you want to do them in uh, camo, do them in camo. I fully support it. Paint it any colors you want, really. Any particular craft world you're painting them? Oh, you're doing red armor, right? So are you doing Salman or are you doing something Salman adjacent? I think I need to go to the washroom. I'll be right back. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Did you say the love we convinced uh, Salma to uh, not paint Sam on and to uh, pick a better craft world? Define better. Why, we opened up a dictionary. dictionary. You fucking opened up a dictionary. You're the one using that word. I don't even think you know what it means. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna open up a dictionary. Okay, better. Not Sam Hearn. That doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. How does it how does it make sense? Does it make any better? How is anything better? See, that that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Trust me, bro. <laughs> Trust me, bro. I love the American this one. Perfect sense. Okay. My actual 
comes back. No, well, let's uh, go ahead and paint Cam. Because he's wearing, I guess, that ranger cloak, isn't he? Yeah. It is a ranger cloak on, right? It's not like just like a normal cloak. Yeah, it's it's just a regular cloak on the on the altar. Oh, I thought it was like a ranger cloak, like the hood. So, I mean, the hood's not up. My apologies. I don't know then. I like how you're pointing it right near my computer. It's really awesome. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Thank you, my boy. Yeah, that's that's more typical of the gold I like right there. Uh, Kim might as well do it white like the artwork, but it's going to be a bitch to mask off Samhan is what I was doing yes was thinking of doing Beltan but it's so much white to paint yeah Beltan's pretty cool um I mean there's also uh the other lesser known craft worlds that have really interesting color schemes uh the other one that if I was to do another craft world I'd probably go um uh I'm, I, I think it's pronounced like me lock but yeah I'd probably go with them they're pretty cool it's a basically it's a gray and orange. There's all there's all sorts of color schemes you can go. And you can make up your own craft world. And you can even make up your own. That's right. A reminder to all those people out there that paint 40k or less models. You can make up your own fashion. Yep, totally. The codex, the Eldar codex, allows for creating your own craft world, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like Space Marines doing their own custom chapter kind of thing. Yep. Which is pretty darn cool. I think the reason why Sam Han gets painted as everything is just because obviously it's just the, the color scheme is just so striking, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to repaint over that. I made a mistake playing the other. I should have built the lower half, like the legs, and glued them to the boot. What are you working on? Demon Bell. Oh, right. Not the tower. Should have started with the legs, glued them to the base, then glued everything else on to the... Put the resin at the end. That's not one of the plastic ones, so... Uh, She's already got really small feet, so there's not a lot of like connection points. It'd be hard to balance these down. But yeah, Kim, I mean, like, if you want to go with Salman, do it Salman, man. And 
if you want to go camo cloak on your autark, do the camo cloak. Camo cloak would be cool. Yeah. Now, do do those feel like that? Are we starting to get there? I think we are. I think we're getting there. Oh. All right, what's next? Um, you know what? Since I already have it up, I'm going to use some black metal. We're going to do those engine nozzles. exactly what I was thinking. Do, 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 do. Time we at? Are we really? There's only 15 minutes left? Pretty much. <laughs> What have we been talking about all this time? Have I been asleep? Crap. <laughs> yeah, you've actually been working. I've actually been... Fuck you, man. I've been working since we've been doing all this aeronautica shit. I want to get these guys done. Get them done. No, I mean, like, this stream, like, <laughs> you haven't been sidetracked. <laughs> oh. That's actually... True, yeah. yeah. Yeah, normally somebody brings up something and then we end up on a tangent. I right, hear you. Just cleaning off my Speaking ice pick. Speaking of black metal, uh, yesterday at work, uh, me and one of the kids made a black metal song and recorded it on his phone, not on mine. But I will see if I can get that fucking recording. Yeah, the one that's just around the corner from Adepticon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it Big Bear or something? Kuma's Corner. Kuma, that's it. And unironically, it is literally around the corner from the convention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went there. Uh, we didn't get in that one night, but we went there because it was like fucking jam packed. Everybody from the convention was there. Yeah. <sighs> I typically go there. I've had better luck going there for like lunch. Yeah. Well, that's like most places, right? Many a night, I just, even though the uh, restaurants at the hotels are more expensive, which has been more reliable for actually, you know, getting dinner. Yeah. I mean, I think two nights I literally ate at that, like, bar that was, like, right above the stairs where uh, everybody paints. Oh, in the in the convention there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That 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 bar is pretty pricey. There are some nights though where it's like I'm not sitting at Giordano's or Kuma's or Noodle House for you know. Noodle House is pretty good. I had Noodle House. No, it's good, but I'm not gonna sit in line for like two three hours to eat fucking dinner. <laughs> There, there was a, there was like one or two nights where I ate at the hotel, and then um, one of them was at Noodle House, Noodle Company. What is it called? But I went to Kuma's twice for for lunch. Had no problem sitting there. I also went, I also went both times by myself. So <laughs> the other one I have to hit as well is Portillo's. Yeah, Matt doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. Yeah. What, the love of Portillo's? Yes. Well, he's local, isn't he? Yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah, I told him that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, most places do not sell hot dogs like the way they do. So, hot 
How do they want the, the cake shake and how so on? Go to two ones, once or twice. And I don't know. I never had a true Chicago deep dish last time I went because uh, Illuminati. I went with a group of. I went with li like literally like a clown car. Like a bunch of us got in one person's like SUV and we filled up all the seats. In fact, uh, he had to fold up his like trunk seats. You know how some SUVs have seats that fold up in the trunk. We had to fold those up, <laughs> and everybody got in. We went to Giordano's in two cars, and uh, after three hours, never got a deep dish pizza. Uh, I would recommend Luminati's. That was recommended to us. We thoroughly enjoyed it. It was damn good pizza uh, deep dish. It's right over by the airport. Uh, Midway or uh, O'Hare. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not far from the convention center, but it's probably about 10, 15 minutes. Now maybe a little bit longer. More like 20, 25 minute drive. It is like kind of southwest of O'Hare, but like so is the convention center. So yeah. You know what? I'm not sure exactly how far away it is. But, yeah. Distance to me doesn't fucking matter. Like, no. It'll matter a teeny bit because I'm renting a car. Right. That's about it. Um, but yeah, Luminati's. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a nice atmosphere. It's, you know, more of a family style kind of uh, eatery. Because, like, I drive, like, halfway across the state to the fuck in uh, DC traffic just to get some freaking Schmidt rolls so I don't mind driving 10-15 minutes to get you know an actual deep dish yeah it's it's a it's it's a well known joint for many Chicago folk so and it was highly recommended to us at the time and so the other one was like downtown Chicago and we were like nah we're not going to fucking downtown Chicago But yeah, Luminati's. That's the one that was recommended to us, and it was a good recommendation. Was it good? Golden Bush? Yeah. Because we only had, between the four of us, we had two of them. Holy fuck, we, could, we, we couldn't finish it. It was just too much. Oh, you got this. Oh, my God. No, just getting one? Even amongst, say, you know, two or three of you? Yeah. Is, is plenty. Two, two slices of pizza, maybe three, depending on how big the pizza is. I'm done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> there was a time in my life where I could crust a pizza all by myself. Same. I stopped doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I stopped doing it because of the sugar beaties, but yeah. Well, I just stopped doing it because then I fucking took the pizza. <laughs> no, I know. That's what I'm saying. You end up in my boat the, with the sugar beaties. But yeah. That's why I went with a bunch of people because I figured we go to get pizza. What the noodle, the noodle company or noodle house that was about place is called. I remember what it is. I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> I mean, like the actual stuff where they put like an actual egg in it and stuff. Yeah. And there's a there's a good one up near where my grandparents live. I go into the city. Oh. You ever do a uh, Korean barbecue? Um, legit Korean barbecue? No, because we have no illegitimate barbecue. One. I've had illegitimate. Korean barbecue. <laughs> Meaning that I had it at some posh restaurant that I don't think they knew what Korean barbecue was, but the menu said it was Korean barbecue. Yeah, that sounds lame. 
the only without going like into deep deep, the only like healing garbage you place I've seen is always jam packed with a long wave. Oh really? Well, it's it's good stuff. I mean, there's a, there's a few joints around me, and yeah, I love it. Like they basically just start up an oven right like a, a, a grill in front of you, and they just yeah. bring you all the it's shit. Really and you just legit Japanese like restaurant. Well, it's yeah, it's kind of like that, but it's Korean. It's not Japanese. Well, no, I get that, but they have the they literally like build a table around the fucking grill. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 like family dining, but like it's one central heating source and everybody just chucks their shit in there and yeah and they also do the uh hot pot that one's fun too i would like to i might go there one day to just see the wave but like most of the time when i'm going to restaurants with people and some of those people aren't i almost sound like a freaking like dumb saying this but aren't cultured so if it isn't like if they have to wait more than, like, 10, 15 minutes, it's, like, the biggest fucking deal in history. Oh, that's just impatience. I mean, there's plenty of folk like that. Uh, so I don't typically get to go there often. The only... I do know get to go to popular restaurants to go go, like, hour and wait. Yeah, the kind of people who get upset if they're Tim Hortons or uh, fucking McDonald's is, like, five minutes uh, wait time. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, fuck those uncultured swine. I would like to go drink that because there is a Jap. I, I like the uh, back where I used to live. There's a Japanese food shop where you basically had you didn't now you didn't touch the grill at all. The chef touched. Oh, but, like a hibachi. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what it was the actual thing was called, but it was like this big giant where like you know you could fit multiple things. The guy just like freaking did. Yeah. No. Not like that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's we've got one of those around here as well. I don't know if there's multiple, but I know there's one that I, I've been to many times, and I enjoy it. It's expensive, but, you know, it's a dinner and a show kind of thing, right? And a lot of fun. Dinner, it's an experience. I don't mind paying more if the atmosphere is nice and I sit down. Because, like, I can go get a cheap meal and I'm going to sit there. Like, I can go sit, sit at McDonald's and eat a McDonald's meal for dinner. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm just going to feel, feel fucking miserable. So I'll just, you know, pay extra... I don't know, like twenty dollars and not to feel miserable at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. Alrighty. Well, we got some work done. On the little planes, yeah. the bombas. What's going on there? COVID restrictions that left me in other countries. I mean, now that they have. Um, and when I go abroad, I'm not going to go to this fucking spot. <laughs> when you go where? When I go abroad. Who's abroad? What's abroad? Because I'm going to drive up there. Shouldn't be too hard to find me. There's only uh, there's only nine others. <laughs> no, because you're not one of the ten, remember? Oh, right. You're not a Canadian. But I'm a resident. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't say 10 Canadians. I didn't say there's 10 residents going there. You know how many who, you know how many who vote? How many residents? Canadians. Canada? About 15 residents. There's only 10 people but 15 vote? That sounds like the American voting system. <laughs> ha. <laughs> well, because there's you and your family. There's at least four of you, right? Uh, at least. Yeah. So as far as I know. At least 15. But I'm assuming you all can go. Everybody in your household can go. I'm not actually Canadian. Nope. My wife's Canadian. Okay, she's one of the ten. <laughs> so I'm going to have to take... So there's 14. <laughs> Kim, you should give the book De uh, by Dan Abnett called Double Eagle a read. In that book, you get the air fighting from both views Astro Militarum and the Eldar really cool good book I have that one I think but I guess like the example would be like if I went to Norway the whole time there I'm not going to mm. go through freaking McDonald's <laughs> no no no, no. Well, yeah maybe you, you could taste the difference between 
American and English is one. If they say it's a big difference, I wouldn't know. Well, there's already a difference between Canadian and American McDonald's and I've had before. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but you know what though? I I I like McDonald's, American McDonald's, uh, McNuggets over Canadian. Not sure why. Probably because we're in Canada. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's got to be something like that. But yeah, um, for whatever reason, Mickey D's on the American side. Uh, oh, and the quarter pounders. The quarter pounders are just so damn good. Just extra greasy. Like it feels like a, a proper patty. Whereas on the Canadian side, it's like those little fucking flash frozen patties, and it just kind of warmed up kind of thing. It's crap. It's crap. I mean, I realize, yes, it's like McDonald's is it's junk food, right? So. Does it look like they're all flying again? Like this one's closer to us and then... To me and my children ever again. Yeah, there we go. And they're like off in the distance. It's like far away. <laughs> Hero K! Thanks for the stream, Chris. I'm off to work now. Later, duder. Later. What were we going to say, uh, sheep? There's already a blue screen there, so it wouldn't be too hard to edit out. Like maybe... Make like a landscape under there. Fuck, you're right. Here I am wasting my talent's painting when I could be doing special effects. I mean, I'll see paint job. <laughs> paint job's great. Uh, Kim, starting to see the end of the painting of the new Eldar models. The end of it? No. The end? It's never the end. The end. Or he's talking about, are you talking about your models? Oh, well then, yes. If you just picked up Eldritch Omens, just one box, then yes. I mean, it's what? Autark, three Shroud Runners, five Snipers. Right? It's not terribly complex. I've been meaning because I want to do something. Because um, I have my Autark. I picked up the previous Autark with the wings. And so I want to do my Autark involving this kit and the with the new one. So, that's the plan, anyway. Not that I need more Autarks on foot, because I don't play a lot of on foot. I usually play a lot of jet bike. So, I gotta get more of my jet bikes done. This is what I should be doing. Kim, if I plow through, I might get them done before the weekend. Oh, I'm sure you will, Kim. And if you do, send me an email. <laughs> yeah, plow. <laughs> plow. Kim's plowing. Plowing on. Child. <laughs> just just giving them a good plowing. Plow them, Elder. Yeah, plowing them. Just plowing them. <laughs> I would say I regret it, but nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. Kim, I did demagnetize the new Autark, so I have all the guns and all the heads and both backpacks. Oof. Man, that's... Yeah, I, I'm... I like my options, but I'm not that big on making sure that my model is all the options. Um, oh, I mean, I might as well just tell you. I'm, I'm going to do that Autark, but I'm going to make them look like the cover art for the Codex. That's what I'm going to do. But, I mean, like, the rest of the Autark. I'll probably do the other Autark. I'll probably do the Warp Spider Backpack. Um, what options for him? I don't know, but because the Warp Spider backpack is is pretty damn cool, and in fact, I have like some old Warp Spiders. Where the hell are they? I think they were close by. Cause Did was... you ever find out if the wings from the old Altar are going to back to this Altar? Um, well, I mean, I can look at that right now. Hold on. Oh, the crab people. The crab people. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. No, I think you might have to finagle the, the back. Yeah, because the wings... I think the wings can attach and then they plug in. There, there's more of a plug-in kind of mechanism to it as opposed to the new one where it's a flat back. But it's really not that difficult to just cut that to shape. I mean, like, if you wanted the wings... Like, if you want the Exarch wings for your your person you're more likely going to use this kit with these wings and all the other options appear to be yeah so are the torso switchable the torso no because the torso on both yeah both torsos are like you see here the torso and the leg are one piece whereas this guy over here is the torso and his leg right so, yeah, because we were gonna get four all types, two of the wings, one of the this one comes out, two of this, three of this, and then um, kind of switch them so I have two of the you know, the work, the jump pack one, and the you know, winged one, yeah, jumping off of you know, that rock that he's standing on, and the other one, you get what I'm saying, yep, I hear you. Just so there's a little bit of variety so they're not all like same pose. But I do like this head. The one with the double crests on it. Like what the hell are these little plumes of hair thing called? On like you know, like Roman centurions? It's called a plume. A yeah. plume? Plume or crest, quite literally. Oh. I mean there is probably a Latin word that Matt knows, but it's generally just called plume or crest. Why would plume. Matt know? Hey? Hmm? Why would Matt know? Because he's really into like ancient like Bronze Age when you know plumes on helmets was a like big thing. Oh. Oh man. I wasn't making a joke. Just like actually being quite serious, he might actually know like the actual like like original thing to one of his. Man, if they were really plotting this thing out really well, they would have made it so that the chest piece for this body could have been swapped out with this one. That's, the, what, I, that's what I was getting at, because in Dawn, I wanted to make the all stars solid. Female? Yeah. Yeah. Just because Dawn will work too. Of course. I like the game. Well, I really like the unhelmeted head, but... You couldn't put that with the female torso. I mean, you could, but... Oh, does that one not come with an unhelmeted head? The old one? No. All, there's, like, no extra bits with this with this kit. With the old uh, winged Autark. As you see, that's how you put them together. Which was, like, a really big uh, issue for people when this kit came out. Because they're like, that's all you get. And yeah, he, they got rid of the other Autark. So, like, for a while, like, the only thing you could feel was an Autark with that strip. Yeah, like, you know. And I already have one that is this Autark, painted up like this. Um, mine, I actually put chrome on it. Not too much chrome. Just on the feathers and the head crest, chrome. Oh, and the sword, I think. I think I've done a showcase video on that, haven't I? Probably. Probably. But yeah. I mean, I really like the unhelmeted head for the Autark. It's really freaking cool. And I like this yeah, head crest. It's, it's, it's their Sustained self esteem on high street. Yeah. Well, and it's. Oh, man. Oh, wait, can I? Who would go into a combat zone without wearing their hands? Yeah. Um, e. I don't know if you guys caught the unboxing of, like, the Guardians. The fucking Guardian kit. Tons of options. Yeah, these freaking Guardians, man. These guys are just... Because you can do all 
helmeted heads. Helmeted yeah, you can do all helmeted heads, or you can do them unhelmeted. And there's tons of unhelmeted heads. And it's really cool. And then, of course, you also have more helmeted heads, but they got the little um, uh, top knots on them for the close combat duders. So, oh, it comes with the close combat weapons in there. Yeah, the guardian kit. Yeah, it's it's both it's both. Uh, oh, I don't need the transform guardian on Okay. Yeah, no, no, it's both it's both kits in the box. That would have not been. Yeah, I mean, it only makes sense because they basically have like the same options. Um, like the platform, you just swap out the top and you put the um, defensive thing for the storm guardians, and the defenders obviously put a, sl a slap a heavy weapon on, and you know. But I like all the unhelmeted options for these guys, man. They're just these freaking guardians are just so darn cool. You could probably use one of those unhelmeted heads for the other top parts. If you want. Oh, like a fem yeah. Oh yeah. Well, cause yeah, cause like if I go with the female torso, yeah, I'd like this head, like it's just a little too masculine. Versus like there's some of the other heads um, that are you know they feel a little more feminine to them. I mean they're elves, so like everything's kind of feminine, but. Yeah. Is there any heads with this sprue? But there is a distinction between the way does GW does male and female elf heads. Because you can see it in some like the high elf. Yes. You see it on these unhelmeted heads. Yeah, like this one here feels like a, like a female head. That one feels like a female head. And this one here feels like a female head. Some of the ones with like doodads on their face, it's hard to say. Yeah, just some of these freaking options are just so damn cool. And I like how there's many different styles for them, for these unhelmeted ones. Because you get some that have like like little bits like on their faces, like you know, like the, the Bane mask kind of thing. You got some that are screaming, some that have straight faces, some that are angry. There's another one screaming. Some of them got buns. Some of them got their hair down. Some have shaved heads. Lots of options, man. The other thing I really, really like, uh, I didn't realize at the time, but somebody pointed out in the video, is that the little back doodads are already attached to the back of the torso. The old kits, you have to put these aerials in, into the torso. And that was annoying. Yeah. And also the Guardian. Yeah. Well, the legs too, because you have to you have to glue the two legs together in the old Guardian, yeah, and then glue the torso there, in. There were there were periods of times where I put the Guardian together, put those little back vent antenna things on, sat them down, and then since it's literally just a flat piece that's kind of angled slightly backwards, sometimes it would just slide off. Yeah. Or I, I would think the glue was completely dry and it would actually stick downwards a little bit. Anywho, yeah, the Guardian kit uh, is a really fantastic kit for every for every uh, Eldar player out there, or even even anybody who's into the elves. There's just a lot of stuff there. The Dark Reapers, they're not bad. Uh, they're they're really darn good. The paint job does not do those faces very uh, justice. The faces are actually not that uh, cartoonish looking. I think it's just the way they, the the way they're painted and obviously the way they're photographed. They look kind of you know blank. But there's not a lot of options with these guys. There's the options for the Exarch, but there's not a lot of options for the rest of these guys. Not like the Guardians. What's that? There's an Exarch now for Guardians? No. Guardians? No. There's no Exarchs. Yeah, no, I thought you said there was a lot of options for the Exarch. Dark Reaper. I'm talking about the Dark Reaper. Oh. Sorry, I was, I was talking. I was showing it on camera. I didn't realize you're not watching. No, I was looking at the dystopian war stuff. Uh, they actually have, you know, kits out for that game. Yeah, well, because they got bought out, right? And so they, they started getting redone. Yeah, Wayland Games is uh, Wayland Games has their own um, like game studio now, and 
they bought that one off. The, right. The company that TV mm-hmm. has the Serbian Wars one off. You know what? I'm feeling a bit of the bug. I might put this guy together later. One of the things I'd like to do, though, is he, he is automatically touching a piece of, like, Eldar, you know, rubble or whatever. You know, that basing bit that they do. I think I'd like to cu- cut that away and elevate him higher onto a base. So it looks like he's, like, really floating. Because on the, on the cover art of the Codex... You know, he's flying over the battlefield, right? Yeah. 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 I like the helmet. The helmet is on the codex, but I kind of like the double crest helmet. I think that would be more Alex, impressive. Alex, you codex helmet for the, your codex fire team. Buy a few more all parts down the line. <laughs> Just buy more. Well, because you can switch around the the weapons on them, so you can maybe one day you'll want a field X ex- art with wings and have that you know like power glaive and whatever the cannon is. Yeah, well, like because like it's fun that he comes with this launcher, so he can kind of provide like a, a bit of more of a support role as opposed to being on the front line. Because usually with autarchs, I I chuck them up front and you know hope for the best kind of thing. So you could paint that one. Or build that one as he's intended, and then build your other one however you want. The the one that's just kind of standing there with the the warp spider pack. Yeah. And then, I don't know, get another flying one, and then just use the weapons, you know, different and, use. And I like the one with the back banner pole too. That's really cool. There's too many options, man. I'm complaining oh, now. You can build them without the jump spider pack. You can just build them with a the back thing, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, you can just do a back banner. Does it have the scorpion mask with the mandible blasters? Uh, the this, helmet? no, that's on this kit. This guy's got the, other kit. Okay. yeah. So you can build the old, bla- the old, uh, chain sword, um, like, Nelka pistol. All yeah. Part. You know, the old metal one? Yeah, you just swap them. out this guy's head with this guy's pistol. Yeah, and you yeah. put it on this new one. And yeah, and pretty much made like a one to one plastic version of that mini because it was just an altar with the mandible blasters and the jump pack. Yeah, yeah. And I think that one though was this helmet though, wasn't it? It had the, the big it crest on it. Single crested, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Too many options. <laughs> no, I'm not fucking magnetizing it either. <laughs> I just build, build one how you want. Build the one dude that's the cover art, and then build the other one how you want. And then yeah. later on down the line, you'll probably get the itch to build a fucking other one, so just buy another kit then. Yeah, probably. Also need to finish my my Rafe Lord. Need to get him all done. Get him ready for the yeah. battlefield. It's a new kit, so it's not like GW's gonna discontinue it tomorrow. No, not likely. They might, but not likely. <laughs> and it's entirely possible. The Eldar line is good as crap. Yeah. Gim Gim would be having a fucking heyday if that happened. <laughs> yeah, possibly. All right, what time are we at here? <laughs> Holy shit, it's 15 minutes OT. Jeez Louise. Um, any parting words? Boop. You can paint your own facts. You don't have to go off of all the color schemes to show that. Yeah, be be original, unlike Chris. There we go. Yeah, be original, unlike Chris. You know, that, that, that dumb poster, the poser on the internet. Exactly, because totally everything that Chris does for Eldar is all Samhan. So that's like that's like that's basically being the Ultramarines of Eldar. I mean, you are quite literally painting the faction that they use. For their storefront and stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. They're, it's the ultramarines of Eldar. <laughs> yeah, be cool. Paint will kill. <laughs> <laughs> Sheep, what do you got? There's no shame in repainting old models. Yep. There. That's absolutely correct. Although I think you might know my stance on really old models and repainting them. And if you don't, 
<laughs> well, no, I, I often don't recommend people do that, um, especially when they're starting out, just because when you're starting out painting and, you know, all your old models, and then, of course, you know, as you progress through the years of doing this, and, you know, for anybody who's really kind of, you know, uh, conscious about their painting efforts and, you know, getting better and, you know, being better at the painting, that having all your old models is basically, you know, uh, a window into the past, like how you used to paint, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, still keep some of that. What's that? I still keep some of the old models, though. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean. I just happen, happen to find five by piece just in a box. Yeah. Kim says, there's no play for Mr. Gray's to paint your fucking models. And if you're not a Patreon of Chris yet, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Get on there. <laughs> true. Very true, Kim. Thank you. Old Man Logan, yes. No one wants to hear it again. <laughs> too late. You, you, you typed that too, too slowly. All right. Uh, and for me, I mean, it's usual. Take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start working on this art. I, I was thinking about... Because um, I, I think I want to remove that little that little bit under his foot here where he stands on it, like he's doing tippy-toe. Uh, and basically have him kind of like he's flying. Like do a flying stand kind of thing. What do you th What do you guys think? Do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Because I, I like the idea of modeling him so that it looks like he's he's flying kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like the cover art, right? Sure, do it. Why not? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just trying to think of a good way to do it. Like if I, if I should just use like a, a piece of wire or if I should take like a, you know, um, like a piece of um, flying stand and then just warm it up and give it a bend and make it interesting or, you know. I don't know. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. My, use a flying stand. Do a, use a flying stand? Yeah, well, because, like, I'm not a big fan of the new flying stands. You know, the ones that, like, for the aggressors and shit. Or not the aggressors, but inceptors. They have that curve to them and everything. Like these right here. Speaking of models that I need to get to. Like this. Where they have this curve in them. I'm not a huge fan of that. And mainly because where how they mount up to the figure is kind of kind of garbo. You know. But yeah. Speaking of which, I got to get my more of my deepkin done. <laughs> Speaking of which. Okay, I'm rambling at this point. Old man Logan later dude, later duders. Yeah, I think we're done. We're done. Let's get out of here. Um, oh shit, running things over here. Dun 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 If I was better at scatting, I'd probably do that. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try it because I'm shit at it.